Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. So we're back here in the frozen plains, in the snowy plains where we found this village and wrapped up the last episode. And I have not gone home yet, because in today's episode we're going to seek out a woodland mansion. Of course, I did mention in the episode about ocean monuments that finding a woodland mansion is not the kind of thing that you typically run into every day. Well, funny story, <laughs> and it's a story that will take us through the last type of village that we haven't seen yet in this series. There is a snowy tiger village around here, which is normally just going to be a regular tiger village if you find it in a biome without snow. It's a series of cobblestone and spruce buildings with pumpkins growing around and little wheat patches. So there are some houses out here in the tiger as well, and you'll often find smoke from campfires rising through the trees, indicating that one of these villages is here, because they can be quite difficult to spot if all you see is a tree line. But I was making my way through this area trying to look for a snowy plains biome, actually the one that we've just come from over there. We also found this pretty awesome looking landscape with an old growth pine tiger on either side of a massive river here and pretty steep hills to either side. I kind of want to turn this into a national park kind of thing at some stage, but I'm not sure what I would build here quite yet. Honestly though, the view of this valley alone has got to be worth the price of admission. But before all that, I came across this. <laughs> This right here is a woodland mansion that I actually approached from the sea over there. I was just casually rowing along the coastline trying to find a snowy biome from the frozen ocean that we'd found earlier and this faded into the render distance. So you'll find these woodland mansions occasionally, rarely, as you explore the world, usually starting from, but not limited to, the area of a roofed forest, one of the dark oak forests that you'll find throughout the world. And honestly, these are worth exploring when you find them, with the caveat that they are quite dangerous locations. But the only other way of finding them as a guarantee is to buy a woodland explorer map from a cartographer villager, in much the same way as we bought the ocean Explorer map earlier this week. And even then, as with the Ocean Explorer map, there is no guarantee that the landmark they lead you to is going to be particularly close. And as I mentioned, in some cases, I've had to travel out tens of thousands of blocks to a woodland mansion that wasn't even the closest one to my spawn point. So I honestly think these are worth exploring when you find them. But once again, quick caveat, these places are a little bit dangerous. We're going to be taking a lot of torches because the interior needs lighting up and there might be some hostile mobs spawning in here. I mean, there will definitely be some hostile mobs, but the usual type of hostile mobs that spawn in dark areas like creepers, zombies, skeletons, that kind of stuff. The residents of the mansion itself, however, are illagers. Go back to what I said the other day about pillagers spawning in those outpost areas, and these are their axe-murdering cousins. <laughs> these are vindicators, and you need to keep them at a distance because each one is carrying an iron axe, which will do a ton of damage. This is more of a concern on Java Edition than it is on Bedrock Edition, because on Java Edition, axes do more damage than swords, whereas on Bedrock Edition, because they haven't had a bunch of combat changes, axes aren't quite quite as damaging. But even so, axes in the hands of a Vindicator can do a great deal of damage, so it's usually worth taking them out when you see them. So as we wander into this mansion, it is a vast and winding structure, filled with a random assortment of rooms. You're guaranteed basically not to find the same rooms in every single mansion. We've got a couple of interesting ones around here. We've got a melon farm and a pumpkin farm, all full to the brim. So if you're short on melons or pumpkins, you can always come to this place and find them. And you might be hearing some of the Vindicator noises through the walls, sometimes even through the ceiling. The Vindicators will spawn a few per floor in different rooms, and there's a chest in there. We've got a couple of creepers and spiders and other naturally spawned mobs around here, and it looks like I've just exhausted my supply of slowness arrows that we got from the strays. But I'm going to be very careful when exploring this area so that I don't end up finding <laughs> one of these Vindicators. Yep, there we go, running up on me unawares. And he's doing a heart and a half of damage to me, which doesn't seem like much, but I'm wearing full protection for diamond armor. <laughs> so it's actually pretty hefty, the damage that they will do. And if you don't come into this with decent armor, then you're going to get your butt handed to you by those Vindicators. Still, there's another little farming area right here and a chest right here, which currently contains nothing. You'll find that a bunch of the chests 
certain woodland mansions don't have a great deal of loot in. They are more decorative than anything else. There's another Vindicator over here, and if I've got some blocks on me, I'm going to demonstrate something that's kind of useful about these Vindicators. Yet we can hop up here with a couple of blocks, and let's see if we can guide him into this location. There we go. Maybe we can place a block behind him. See if I hop from one block to another, if it'll follow me in here. Yes, there we go. He is now trapped. <laughs> we managed to trap him, and just be careful not to walk too close to the corners, because sometimes if they pathfind to you, they can still hit you. So Vindicators in these Woodland Mansions are actually persistent mobs in much the same way as the Elder Guardians are in Ocean Monuments. They will not despawn even if you go super far away from the mansion. And you can choose to kill them while you're here, but the fact that they are persistent and that they don't despawn means that you can use them for some interesting stuff. This isn't the only place we will encounter Vindicators though, so there's a cool easter egg that you can do with them where you name tag them Johnny and they will attack basically everything. But we can do that with a Vindicator who spawns from a Pillager Raid instead of having to use one from a Woodland Mansion. Anyway, well, it's dark outside and there might be other mobs spawning on the surface. It might be slightly safer exploring this woodland mansion since we might have fewer mobs spawning here just because it's a dark place they can spawn. So let's continue exploring and take a look at some of the other rooms in here. This one at least has a skeleton, a creeper and a spider in it all hiding around the corner here. And I'm hearing the noises of vindicators, although they might just be on the floor above us. Always worth lighting up the darker corners of these rooms, though, because each of these rooms, despite having some torches in the hallway, is going to be a little darker. And and here you'll notice the only example of a dark oak tree that spawned with a single log trunk and that's not the way dark oak trees typically spawn in the natural world in Minecraft, so maybe maybe these illagers have been doing experiments cloning dark oak trees. This room right here is kind of like a jail cell inside of the mansion. There's a lever on it, and occasionally you might find that mobs have spawned inside of here as though they've been put in a prison, but as of right now, we don't need to worry too much about that. There's nothing interesting in there for us. I think there's a cauldron in there. Nothing much to worry about. I'm trying my best not to look at this enderman who seems to have taken up residence in the mansion as well. Just got a couple of skeletons to clear out, and once again, we have one or two of these little flower shrine rooms, but nothing else really to worry about. Another little prison cell here. Yeah, this does just have a cauldron in the corner and a little bit of carpet, but there's nothing really in here to worry about. Sometimes the mansion actually loops back around on itself, and you can walk around the entire interior in a loop. In this case, though, it looks like it's closed off on the back wall, so we're going to run around to this side and see what rooms are over here. Well, this one's got a zombie, <laughs> but also has a selection of different flowers, which might be kind of fun if you haven't found a flower forest for alliums yet. These rooms with the diagonal wall and the winding staircase here might have a couple of mobs hiding on the staircase because they can still spawn on some of the darkened areas around here, but if you follow these all the way to the end, <laughs> making sure that you take out anything that spawns down here in the process, at the end of this deadly maze you will find a chest, and that chest contains a little bit of loot, including name tags, leads, I think this is the only place you can find a lead in a loot chest, we got a bit of gunpowder, some bones, some seeds, once again the loot is not all that much to write home about, but name tags are still technically treasure items, so it's kind of nice to have a couple more of them. As we continue around the perimeter, that staircase room actually takes up a fair amount of room internally in the mansion, so don't have to worry too much about that. And aha, we have one of the, ooh, okay, we've heard a couple of different noises through the wall there. So I'm I'm trying to react to everything at once, but there's a lot going on in here. Inside some of these rooms, you'll find wool sculptures. This one being of a Vindicator holding, I guess, a golden shovel. <laughs> it's up to interpretation what exactly this thing is. But if you dig into the center of this thing's face, for example, if we hop up here, and I dig on through basically straight behind his eyebrows, you'll find there's a block of lapis embedded directly in his forehead. Once again, this isn't the best loot in the world, considering that we get a lot of lapis just from caving and we can trade it from villagers, but a whole block of lapis is kind of an interesting find as far as treasure goes. And in this case, I'm gonna leave this guy's forehead wide open just so I can see that I've been in here before and I don't need to collect the block of lapis. Let's continue our tour. There's another Vindicator standing over there, and when they are passive, they're just kind of looking like villagers. They've got their hands together at the front there, and as soon as they notice you, they're going to whip out that axe and start following you. I'm being a little bit careful because there is one in this room over here to the left as well. He's standing up there by the shelves, so I'm trying to take these folks on from a safe distance. We don't really have that much to worry about with the armor that we've got, but I do want to make sure I don't get cornered and overwhelmed here. Now, this room always looks incredibly promising to people who want to loot structures. There are chests basically everywhere here, and I believe these are sometimes meant to be double chests, but on world generation, they end up not getting combined into double chests they end up as single chests. Unfortunately, these chests don't have anything in. Once again, this is more of a treasure trove of the chests themselves if you want to 
spare yourself the trouble of crafting them. But it's worth lighting up these shelves just so we don't end up with stuff spawning up there, because sometimes creepers can walk down from the shelves and surprise you. Vindicators once slain will occasionally drop emeralds though, so it's kind of nice to collect those. We've got a little bit of junk items on us right now that I can probably throw out as we move around here. There's a couple more rooms at the end here, and I want to make sure that we don't get surprised by any Vindicators. Those skeletons over there just shot themselves. I think a lot of the Vindicators are actually on the floor above us. So I think we're mostly safe in here. We've got another one of those wool statues. Let's quickly light up around the back just to make sure nothing spawns back there. And I think we'll dig into this one and try and find that lapis block again. Yep, there it is. And the closer I get to the floor above, or the closer I get to the ceiling rather, the more zombie and vindicator noises I hear. So the next floor is going to be a bit of a trial for us. While we're still here on the ground floor, we do have another one of those winding staircase passageways. So let's look around here and keep our guard up. Nope, clear path all the way to the chest. There we go. And there's a golden apple. All right. So we got two of those from this adventure with the one from the igloo the other day and a couple more name tags. So worth checking out, I guess. The illagers are making illager noises in the rooms above us, but I think we've covered every room here on the ground floor. So let's move up to the second floor. And on this floor, we need to start being very careful about where we step because the next floor is going to have at least one evoker. There are already a couple of Vindicators, in fact three Vindicators, chasing me around this staircase. So I'm going to try and make a retreat out to the exit where thankfully it is daytime again and we should be able to pick them off as they follow me out the door. In fact, they're just standing in the hallway right now, so I can take a couple of pot shots at them from a safe distance and not risk getting my butt handed to me by three Vindicators. Here's the last guy, and we'll give him a couple of whacks with the sword. There we go. Nothing too bad. Nothing too bad to worry about, but they can rush you if you're not careful. Now, as we explore this floor, we are looking for another Illager type of mob. We're looking for another guy who looks like the Vindicators, but has a darker robe and will usually just kind of stand on his own with... Whoa, <laughs> there's another guy. Will usually be standing alone just with his arms folded like a villager would because those are the most dangerous inhabitants of these mansions. They are called evokers. We've got a couple of rooms to the sides here with books in, which we'll probably come back to a little bit later. And I see another Vindicator over here on the left who we're going to shoot to draw him out or just take care of him from range. On the right here, we have another library room. And these library rooms can be important treasure troves of books if you haven't got a great deal of access to books yet. Bear in mind, though, that the space between the shelves and the shelves themselves can actually spawn mobs. So <laughs> we need to make sure we are a little bit careful with that. And this room here on the right is more like a planning room, a conference room, I guess, where the uh, Illagers are plotting their world domination. Once again, it looks like this mansion basically stops right here in terms of this corridor. I'll break out the wall just to make sure that, oh, okay, we might break through to the next rooms on the other side. I think for now we'll probably, <laughs> there's a Vindicator through there, I can probably shoot actually, save myself the trouble of dealing with this guy later. Instead of doing the rude thing and breaking through the wall, I think we're going to continue around the opposite side of this corridor because we still haven't run into any evokers, but I expect we will find one around here somewhere. Another conference room right here, that should be fine lit up with a single torch. And right here through one of the rooms you'll find the staircase to the upstairs floor. We're not going to go up there quite yet since we still have a little bit more of this floor to explore, but that's going to be our final destination as we head up the stairs to the penthouse. These rooms here with the closets are always worth checking out, not because there's anything in those, but because they have a mezzanine balcony kind of thing over here where if we climb up the ladder, hopefully there's nothing up here that's going to destroy us, we have another loot chest, which in this case contains a couple of music discs, some more leads, and somehow a zombie has found his way up here. I think I think because of the harder difficulty setting, each zombie that I attack is spawning a couple of reinforcements and they're kind of finding their way around to me via these corridors. Well, not to worry, we can continue on around this way and we're definitely reaching rooms of the mansion where I might expect to find some evokers. I also need to craft a few more torches because we are running low here. There's another Vindicator at the end of the hall. We haven't seen any evokers yet, but I'm keeping my eyes and ears peeled because there's a chance we might hear one around any of these corners. In the meantime, on our right hand side, we have a lovely wool sculpture of a cat and another Vindicator rushing at us. There we go. I don't believe there is anything hidden inside the cat sculpture. It's just kind of here for a bit of fun and you could always take down the wool if you wanted to. This room over here on the left is always the most dangerous in terms of natural mob spawns because it has this shelf of stairs around the top which is not going to be reached by any natural light and sometimes they spawn on the interior of the mansion so they don't have any windows and there's always a creeper up there. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's intentional but I'm pretty sure that creepers 
always spawn in those rooms for me. So worth making sure that you light up this area with torches on the solid blocks to make sure that you don't end up with stuff falling in on you when you come back to this room later. This is the room where we killed that Vindicator through the wall, so we've definitely come back around to this side of the mansion, although unfortunately it looks like the emerald that he dropped has despawned. Never mind, can just farm some more of those from villagers. One more Vindicator is coming out of the side room, and I think maybe to our left here we might actually have our first Evoker encounter. I've definitely been hearing one through the floor, so I'd be surprised if they were all the way on the upper part of the mansion here. Let's quickly deviate to our right just to make sure we light up this area. There was a weird lighting glitch in the corner there. And so as we go around the corner, I'll keep my bow handy because, yep, there's an evoker in the corner. And what evokers do is actually summon other mobs to fight for them. These are vexes. They are fairy type creatures with iron swords that will fly through blocks. So they are one of the most dangerous enemies to encounter in these mansions because once they phase through the wall or the floor, it's very difficult to keep track of them. Since they're equipped with iron swords, they do a heck of a lot of damage, and the evokers will summon groups of them anytime they end up seeing you. So there we go. We can kill the evoker from a distance, dodge the vexes, try and hit a couple of them if we can, but we really are pushed back on the retreat for a while here. I honestly recommend trying a little bit of ranged combat on these vexes. Get a little bit of space between you and them, and attack them with a bow and you'll usually be fine, but they do hit pretty hard thanks to that iron sword they're all carrying, so being swarmed by them is not the best thing. Most important thing about Vex encounters though is to keep your health up, so make sure you eat pretty regularly and even if they get a couple of hits on you, you should be fine. Eventually Vexes will start to take damage anyway, because they can't survive for very long after having been summoned by an evoker, and after between, I think it's about 30 and 90 seconds, they will start to take damage naturally until they just end up dying on their own. So if you're running away from them, don't worry, you're not going to come back to a mansion full of vexes next time you attempt to come in here. But I think I managed to deal with all of them, so let's take a step back for a second and discuss what that evoker just dropped. What we have in our inventory right here is a Totem of Undying, a really useful item that allows you effectively to cheat death. If you've got one of these in your main hand or off hand when you end up getting killed, the Totem will save you from death, restore a couple of hearts, and even give you a couple of status effects like regeneration and fire resistance that will help you deal with whatever has just been the cause of your death. It can even save you from death by fall damage if you fall from a great height. I'm going to keep this in my off hand for the remainder of our raid here in the Woodland Mansion, and personally I prefer to make sure I can defend myself with a shield, so this leaves me feeling a bit more vulnerable than usual, but that's really the trade-off. You can have a Totem of Undying to save you from death, but you risk losing the protection of just being able to block stuff with a shield. Either way, these Totems of Undying are really the main reason to come to a Woodland Mansion at all, and it's possible to get them from Evokers in raids as well, but if you stumble on a Woodland Mansion, there's a guarantee that there are going to be at least a couple of Evokers in here, so there's a chance you'll be able to stock up on Totems of Undying before you do anything else more dangerous. Always worth checking underneath the stairs here before we go up because I've been known to get ambushed by Vindicators who are waiting for me in the stairwell. Now let's see if there's anything up here on the top floor of the mansion that will be worth raiding and we'll come back to this face in a second. We've got another library room here it looks like, so maybe we'll need to check the bookshelves for skeletons or creepers. Surprisingly it's looking pretty quiet in that library so we can move on around the corner and up here I would expect to find a couple more evokers if this mansion has spawned more than one of them it will have spawned a couple up here. Another little bedroom style thing here, the decoration is usually pretty plain, and I think an enderman has been here because they've left a grass block right there. Some skeletons here on the left, I can just pop a torch in here and that's that room taken care of. Another room with the closets over here, you're starting to see the patterns at this point. These mansions will just throw out a series of rooms in a relatively random order, and in fact at night time the roof space of these mansions becomes almost more dangerous than the interior of the mansion itself. Let's hop up and check this chest right here, oh a little bit of chainmail armour, that's interesting, we don't tend to get chainmail as loot in many other places, but you can find a chainmail chestplate in Woodland Mansions, and I may as well take the redstone with me, I guess. Now, I'm actually quite surprised that we haven't seen or heard from any other evokers yet. Could this be all there is <laughs> in the Woodland Mansion? I am 
pleasantly surprised if that's the case. But honestly, yeah, I'm not hearing any other evokers as I walk around here, and I think the real test might be waiting for it to <laughs> get fully light outside so that these zombies and skeletons that are on the roof right now end up burning in the daylight, and that way we won't be able to hear too many other mob noises around. So now we come back to this. This giant illager head staring at us from the opposite side of the stairwell. This is an important feature in a lot of mansions, and I'm fairly certain it always generates over the staircase up to the attic, basically like the final floor of the mansion. These are worth taking a look at in closer detail, because if we end up bridging out towards this and dig through it, there's a chance that the mansion has generated an area behind here that we can't get to just by exploring the corridors. Honestly, this guy looks a little bit funnier with his nose cut off, but let's dig through here and see if... Ah, nope, that's led straight to the corridor. So it looks like we might not have a secret room behind this after all, but occasionally the secret rooms in these woodland mansions do generate right here behind this illager face, so it's always worth checking even though it's not a guarantee. It's also worth checking the layout of the rest of the mansion as well, because there's a chance that if we dig through one of these rooms, there we go, we end up with a secret room inside of here, and I don't know for certain if this one is going to contain any loot chests, but there are occasionally rooms in here that don't have any doors or archways between them. They tend to just generate here as part of the sort of filler, I guess, of a woodland mansion. If I dig through the ceiling here, that's just the roof of the mansion itself, though. There is no attic space up in this place. The way to tell if there is a secret room is really just to figure out where the windows are on the outside of the structure, because every wall that faces the outside is probably going to have a window in it somewhere. So yes, unfortunately, having dug through all of the walls that I needed to, based on the shapes of the rooms and any spaces that might still contain some kind of secret, it is regrettably the case that we do not have any secret rooms in this mansion. So hopefully we'll be able to find a different woodland mansion, probably based on one of the cartographer's woodland explorer maps, and we'll find a woodland mansion that does have a secret room and explore those in a separate video, because they're honestly kind of fun to find, and occasionally there's a chance of finding a secret room that has a diamond block on the inside, so it's kind of worth grabbing if you want some extra diamonds and just for the novelty of finding a naturally generated diamond block. But what I'm going to do here is take all the bookshelves, because frankly, bookshelves are kind of expensive to craft. I mean, you can get infinite cow leather and sugar cane so that you can make bookshelves yourself, but it's a lot easier to just swipe them out of woodland mansions. And let's be real, the illagers aren't doing much reading anyway. With the loot in this woodland mansion not being all that valuable, there is a chance to, I think, find a diamond hoe in one of the chests downstairs, but we didn't find that, we didn't find a diamond block, and we didn't really find a great deal of other loot in some of the chests around here. You need to consider what the value in these woodland mansions actually is. Is. And for me, if you find an evoker and you end up getting a totem of undying, that's usually a good thing, because if nothing else, they're required for a couple of Java Minecraft advancements, so it's good to have them. But the other loot for me really is in stuff like these valuable blocks. I now have nearly three stacks of bookshelves in my inventory, and this wasn't the only library room in the mansion. So remember that if we're not using Silk Touch, we can break these down into three books. We can trade them with librarians, we can enchant them ourselves, or we can just use bookshelves for decoration, because it'd be really nice to build a giant library in whatever mansion we end up carving out for ourselves. You might even want to consider moving into a woodland mansion after you've cleared out the former inhabitants, because these are nice big generated structures which you can honestly do whatever you want with after this. Since the illagers themselves are generated with the structure, they will not end up respawning in much the same way as Elder Guardians don't respawn at an ocean monument, so you don't have to worry about more evokers and more vindicators showing up here. There might be the occasional pillager patrol if you step outside too much, but frankly, you don't need to worry too much about them, and this place is yours to do what you want with. So some players will end up renovating a woodland mansion once they find one, and frankly, it can be a fun project if you don't really know what to build, but you want to just fill up the rooms with a bunch of different stuff. In my case, though, I'm just going to stuff my ender chest with all of the loot that I've found in here, all of the bookshelves, and probably this totem of undying as well. Now I know that we're safe from other evoker and vindicator attacks. We're going to take down the remainder of these bookshelves, and then we're going to make our way home, because frankly, I don't feel like sticking around here for too long. 
It sure sounds like there are a bunch of zombies in the foundation down here, so there may be a cave right underneath here. In fact, <laughs> is that a is that the cobblestone foundation or is that the edge of a spawner? No, I think that's actually just the foundation pillar of this mansion because they will generate a bunch of cobblestone underneath them, especially if they spawn on an uneven surface. They'll just generate this big platform of cobblestone that goes right the way down to the ground. I was just hearing a ton of zombies in the entranceway, so I was kind of curious if that was a cave underneath or not. Well, there is still one inhabitant left of the Woodland Mansion. He is in here, and we're probably going to keep him in there for now. He's not going to do any harm to anybody, and we can come back for him if we really need him for something later. But that is this Woodland Mansion well and truly conquered, and let's take a quick look at the loot we got, which doesn't really account for a whole lot, really. There's one Totem of Undying, we got a bunch of name tags, a couple of leads, two lapis blocks, a bit of redstone and a golden apple, but we also got almost seven stacks of bookshelves <laughs> and a few emeralds as well, I guess. And frankly, I'm fine with that. I think those bookshelves are pretty valuable and the fact that we've now got a Totem of Undying means that we can do some more risky and interesting stuff a little bit later in the series. <laughs> and as though they are here to see me off, a Pillager Patrol has spawned on the roof of the mansion. This is not a feature of the mansion itself, that is just an incredible coincidence. And frankly, I'm going to put them in the background as I do my outro. Folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixarifs. I hope you've enjoyed Structures Week and all of the stuff we've got to explore here in the overworld. There are, of course, many more generated structures out there in Minecraft, which we will explore in future episodes. But I think it's been fun to take a look at all of these this week. Don't forget to leave a like on this for me if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care, bye for now.